Hello again everyone, and in this video we're going to be looking at um, my last track, Warcry, and how I made that. And this, I released this track two weeks ago, and I've had a great response on it, so thank you all for that. If for some reason you haven't heard the original, then uh, please have a look, the link for it is at the top of the description. Also at the top of the description, just below that, there'll be a link to the remix competition, and that, you have three weeks remaining to complete your entry for that. So, if you're interested, remix this song, um, and of course more information can be found on that video. But first of all, I'm going to need to show you uh, what the sounds are actually like, so you know whether to follow this tutorial or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the end of the build-up and some of the drop, just to give you an idea of what's actually going on. So here we go. And that continues, obviously. So uh, let's have a look. How do we start this? So each individual sound, um, well, each bass sound that's playing is made up of two um, two tracks. First one is the bass sound. Second one is a sub bass, which goes with it. Uh, and I'll get why to I'll get around to why I did that later. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just get to that later. But let's look at the bass first. So, this bass was made, uh, um, well, it's the same patch as I often use in quite a few of my more recent songs. So, that for that reason, I'm not actually going to take you through a few of the features in this, because uh, I've already got a video on it. So, if you want to know exactly how to make this, then go to a video on my channel called X-Core Getter Growl Bass. And there you will find a tutorial, a massive tutorial, um, of how to make this exact sound. So... But if you don't want to do that, I'll just go through it quickly. There's um, so you can just copy it across. That's what the oscillator tab looks like. That's what the voice thing looks like. Double notch and reject. Classic tube. Dimension expander. EQ. I think uh, you should have um, been able to copy that across by now. But actually, for this sound, it's not the original patch that really does it. It's the effects. So this is what it's. This is what just this bass sounds like without any um, uh, without any of the other drums and stuff so so yeah there you go and now if I were to play the sounds by itself like this and that's with the effects and this is without the effects So you will hear quite a big difference um, to with and without. So, so let's go through what effects I put on. First effect I put in my chain is this uh, rather useful little plugin. My fatness is at thirty-five percent, and my color is actually all the way up. Now gain is naught. Um, yeah, naught. Um, flanger is the next one on there, and this is quite good because it gives you this um, that's with it and this is without so that's quite clear what that's doing but you, you see the rates at 2.11 Hertz um, and I mean I don't know what half this stuff on here does to be honest but you can copy it across if you have this melder flanger which is free by the way it's complete steel so just go and get yourself that uh, what else is there there's the saw shape it's a saw wave and I've put the smoothness all the way up to just rough, uh, even out the like the sharp edges and uh, all that. Um, but that's all there really is to say about that, to be honest. Next, we've got an equalizer, which is far less interesting than it looks. Uh, first of all, the left, we've got a high pass just to get rid of all the useless subs um, because that will just cover up the real sub. Uh, I've got a kick drum kind of cut, so to make face make space for the kick drum. You've got a similar one for the snare, just below 200. And then for the high end, uh, because uh, this adds in quite a lot of high end to the sounds, we've actually compensated for that by taking some out with band 5 and 6. So there we are. After that, we've got the Melder Frequency Shifter, a plugin which I absolutely love. And this, um, I'll turn up the dry wet a bit so you can hear what it will do as a whole. Um, 
Um, so that's about 50% about where you get the maximum um, kind of effect. I brought it down to more like 10%, um, which just dampens it a bit and makes it not quite so obvious. Lastly, for this sound, we've got um, an EQ, and this is actually being modulated with automation, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, those are the top three bands which are being modulated, these ones. Uh, the bass is just a static one, and that's just, again, to take away some of the useless subs. Speaking of which, this is the sub bass that goes with it. Uh, I did a rather time-consuming um, kind of method to get the sub, and that's because um, I mentioned automation. Each of the tracks has like a wide variety of automation on them. And because if you kind of make the automation of the sub and the main bass a bit different, often you can get well, firstly phasing issues, and also it just sounds plain weird. So what I did to get the sub is I duplicated, which is Command D on here, duplicated that track um, to get an exact copy, and then I meticulously changed every effect and every parameter within Massive to turn it into a sub bass. And all that, that just preserved the automation and pitch bend and everything, just so I didn't have to let it sound weird. And I realised that would be a lot easier if I was using a different DAW or door, like I know FL Studio does something like that. Um, but of course, uh, I am a garage band user, so oh well. So what else have we got? So the sub, like, um, yeah, you got it's a sine wave, like most subs you'll get out there. It's got to macro three on the pitch, and macro four on the amp, um, and those that's all to do with the automation. Um, I might talk about that later if I have time. But as subs go, it's just a standard boring one. Yep, and then you've got a few effects. You've got some a small amount of distortion, four percent on this, um, and thirty-five percent color. You've got a wave shaper, which is just doing this sort of shape to it. You've got a tube amp, which is just warming it up a bit. I mean, it's quite a subtle effect if you use it well. When I actually used it on the master track for this song, um, maybe I will do a video on what I do to master tracks. Um, but this is one of the things I actually used. Um, and I just use it to give it a bit more character and kind of warmy fullness. And then a limiter, of course, and then just took some stuff out on the final EQ. But yeah, the sub bases go, it's a pretty standard thing. Um, but yeah. And now let's get onto the automation because that plays a massive part in this track because, um, like, if you're going to make any kind of exciting dubstep, you do really need a lot of modulation to keep people interested long enough. And the bass here is five um, kind of um, automation clips. This one looks like it has five, but it actually only has three, or well, maybe two, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, so let's start with the bass, which is the kind of the best bit of the automation. First of all, macro three. And if you go into massive, you see macro three is the pitch. And the pitch has been assigned to all of the oscillators um, being used. Let's just go to the right, um, go to here. And it's going up 12 uh, semitones. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see the automation is kind of a downwards pitch bend, which sounds like this. Um, but, and that just remains the same for most of the time, this sound appears. So that's pretty standard. Um, macro 4 is. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. If you go into the patch and go into Performer 7, um, 7 is being used as an envelope. So you see it's assigned to double notch. And that just basically means it just going up on a boring upward curve. But for this sound, I wanted to be a bit more kind of crazy with it. So instead, I assigned Macro 4 to the amp. So this means when I move Macro 4, like this, I get that, and so I'm using 4 as a custom envelope, and that's the kind of curve I'm using for it. I mean, it's not a curve, it's the straight lines, but you get the idea. And the, co and the reason I duplicated it is because I wanted this to be exactly the same, um, to, so I duplicated to get the sub bass, remember? And that's just to keep the pitch bend and think the same, and yeah. But of course, for sub bass, the macro 4 isn't going on like any filters because it doesn't have any, instead, it's just going on the amp. Um, yeah, anyway, back what was I doing? Um, yeah, the EQ modulation. 
Um, remember I was talking about that? Uh, remember this? As I play it, you might see it move if you're lucky. So look. I mean, it was probably lagging so much you didn't even see that, but just just have to trust me, it is moving. Um, but yeah, we've got low, mid, high, mid, treble. Um, I mean, quite subtle moves on the treble, but you see these are a bit more obvious in their movement. And that's all there is to this. This one, of course, um, there is, because I pretty much turned off the EQ apart from one band, um, most of these are pretty irrelevant, even though the clips are actually still there. But don't don't even worry yourself with that, that's all good. So that's all there is to the bass sounds. Um, you'll see for each bass sound there is two tracks, like I said earlier. So, and occasionally some of them do vary, like this one has a tremolo instead of a instead of a frequency shift, that's just a, a decision I made over there. Uh, but that's all the information you need, 16th triplets, 65 depth, and the same is being done probably on the sub, but yeah. So that's the exciting sound mainly done. There is another thing you might be interested in, and that's this kind of motorbike sound effects. I mean, it really does sound like a motorbike to me. It sounds like this. It's a bit of lag, but yeah. Uh, so that's made up of four um, this time. One of them is a sub, like before. I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, it's got the tremolo on it, and that's the initial patch thingy. Um, apart from the sub, the one of the two main things which is doing this is this kind of weird sounding like a metallic bell like thing I mean to make bells you kind of want to use bronze or chrome or something um, but this is it if you want to copy it across um, just to keep it short I'm not going to go into mathematics detail on this either but this is what it looks like yep and macro one here is being put on the pitch, and that for pitch bend is actually is being modulated there with macro one, along with actually the tremolo depth um, for here, just because as you hear it, uh, you see the tremolo gets more and more pronounced as time goes on. Yep. So as well as that one, we've also got this full manti build up, which is incredibly boring. Um, it, yeah, you see they're all formats of the oscillators, um, that's actually turned off. Just a simple screen filter, and a pitch again is on mac with macro 1 and put on there. Up one octave. Sub bass, I just beat already been through. And then there's this, this is like the other growls. And that, same growls before, like I said. Um, macro 3, this time is on the pitch bend, which is doing that kind of uh, like the others. Uh, we've also got this, we've got the flanger. This time we've got a saw wave but upside down. And I did that because there isn't an, um, an option for an upside down saw wave, you actually have to do custom shape and draw it yourself. But and that's quite simple to do, you can do all this sort of thing with it. You can make any shape you want. Um, but yeah. And then same settings, that was I think Where's the rate? Oh yeah, I sync the rate to half beats um, and 41 degrees phase if you're interested in that sort of thing. And again, we've got a frequency shifter, and this one is at seven hertz. And I'm wondering if you are wondering why I use seven hertz for this, and there is a mathematical reason behind that. If I, um, the reason I picked seven is because this track is 140 beat per minute, so 140. Turn that into a, a hertz reading, you divide it by 60. Um, and that gets you 2.3 recurring. So that is quarter note. 2.3 hertz is quarter notes at 140 beats a minute. And for this sound, I want a triplet, so I times it by 3, which gets you 7. And that's that's why I picked 7 hertz for this, just because it was the um, triplet speed. And that's that sound, so that's the motorbike sound effects, which together are things like this. Um, the only other sound, or bass sound, in this um, track is these two, and these are this kind of cool frequency shifty thingy. Um, 
and this is the very different definition of the um, plug-in frequency shift it says like this oh yeah so first one like usual is a sub bass with uh, some distortion so a tremolo going at 7 hertz like before and a basic equalizer and that's the massive patch the growl um, which is the cool bit of this is the same sound as before no fancy automation but this time it has two frequency shifters on it um, one didn't quite get me enough of it this is with one when I added the second you just hear it becomes way more pronounced and as well as that we've got our standard distortion at 47% in full colour and the tremolo uh, 7 hertz again and also some of that Right, um, I believe that's everything that I really actually wanted to say about the basses. I could quickly show you the drums. I've got these glitchy kicks, which these are made by taking all the bass out of a kick drum, um, making it mono, this thing loads. See, that's the mono line. And then also, I for this one, I shifted the formats up 7.87 semitones. For the second one, which is the slightly lower kick drum, Again, I took out all the bass, but this time I didn't do any format shifting. So together that sounds like this. Uh, which I think sounds pretty cool. And that goes over the standard kick and snare pattern, which is this. And I've also got this kind of little inhale thing which goes just before the snare. And that, that sounds quite cool when you put them together just because... But yeah, that's all I actually need to say about this track now. So if you do have any more questions about any sound in this track, um, I'll be happy to answer any of them. So, like, just leave a comment in the comment section or message me on uh, SoundCloud or Facebook or wherever you can find me. And I'll, in most cases, I'll be completely happy to answer your questions, so please do ask. And if you haven't, check out the original track. Hopefully this video has inspired you to have a look at it. And also, if you're feeling like it, enter the competition. Um, you've still got three weeks. I've actually already had some entries already, which is surprising. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.